In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a realistic looking seascape using gouache. Let's get into it. I'm painting on watercolour paper here and I've taped it to a board with some masking tape. And the painting size itself roughly measures 18 centimetres by 22 centimetres. Now you might not be able to see it that well in this video, but I've lightly sketched out the composition just with an HB pencil. And now the first thing I'm doing here is I'm painting the dark values first, so these rock shadows. Value is how light or dark a subject is, and when I start a painting, I find it easiest to paint the dark values and shadows first, because it quickly allows me to create a tonal dynamic in the scene that I'm painting. I can then use those dark values to gauge the areas in light and the correct colour saturation. So I'm working now on the sky, the furthest zone away. I've painted a lot of clouds. As I felt that the dark sky would look really good juxtaposed against the foreground of the breaking waves that are in the full sunlight. So that's really going to bring those light values out as well. So far the colours I've been using are a combination of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna and a dash of crimson for the rocks and then the same colours for the clouds in the background but with titanium white added. Then for the shadows in the white water and these breaking waves I've used ultramarine blue with a dash of burnt sienna to desaturate titanium white and also a dash of crimson. Now as I've used the same colours so far in this painting but within different amounts it's actually going to help to create colour harmony because I'm using common colours throughout the painting so they've all got relationships with each other. Now I'm moving on to some of these turquoise bottled green areas of the breaking waves and that was a mix of ultramarine blue with some viridian, a dash of yellow ochre and some titanium white. Now if this is the first time that you've watched any of the videos on my channel, let me introduce myself. My name's Sam and I love painting, especially landscapes and seascapes. I mainly paint in oils, but more recently I've been getting into gouache painting. I just want to see what I can do with it. I've been seeing a lot of gouache paintings, especially on Instagram, and they've really grabbed my attention. And I didn't realise how painterly and detailed you could get by using gouache. So one of the things I want to do, particularly in this painting, is see if I can create a realistic looking seascape using gouache. The colours I'm using includes titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, crimson, ultramarine blue and viridian. So far I've been trying to use the biggest brushes that I can get away with to create that painterly effect and I've mostly been using flat brushes. So I'm painting some of that orange glow that's in the clouds in the background which is going to really add atmosphere and interest to the painting overall. And it's actually already starting to dry, that's the cool thing about gouache is it dries quickly. And then once it's dry it's very easier to layer more colour over the top of the dried layer. So this is a real good advantage. The other thing about gouache which I love is you don't have to worry about if your paintbrush is accidentally dry with the paint on it and they're ruined for example. They're totally not because you can just wash it off. So that's an advantage over acrylic paints. So anyway here I'm using these painterly brush marks with my flat brush painting in the suggestion of some clouds against that warm sky in the background. And then next it was back to painting some more of the waves, building up some more detail. I've found so far when painting with gouache, when you get to this stage, the painting, it kind of looks a bit rough and a bit washy and you're like, Ugh. I don't know whether you could really add more detail to it, but stay with me here. We'll see what happens. I found that the more layers you add, you can really create some detailed paintings using gouache. So you've just got to get past this stage where your painting doesn't look too flash. Now aside from the shadow areas of the breaking waves and the white water in the foreground, the colours that I've been using to mix the main body of the ocean, the barreling waves and then the water that's in the foreground is a combination of ultramarine blue, a little yellow ochre, some viridian 
and titanium white and I've been using these in varying amounts so where I want these darker values and want them a more deeper kind of greenish blue I've used a lot more ultramarine blue and viridian in the mix. And where the waves are a bit more translucent particularly in the upper parts of the breaking waves I've used more titanium white and more viridian in the mix and less ultramarine blue. And then for the main body of the water that's more in the midground and foreground, some of these choppy areas where there's foam patterns and white water, I've used a little bit more ultramarine blue and yellow ochre in the mix along with quite a lot of titanium white. So I've been keeping the same colours but just varying up the mixtures and that's contributing to the colour harmony in the painting, tying these zones together and making the whole thing look much more harmonious. Now it's here that my brushes are getting smaller and I'm starting to add some of the form of the waves, painting some of this white water, the crests of these breaking waves at the top. And I've used titanium white and then I've mixed in a dash of ultramarine blue, some burnt sienna and a dash of crimson and that makes the value of the white darker. I don't want to use my lightest lights right now, especially in the water, otherwise the painting is going to look a bit flat and the water is most definitely not going to look anywhere near as good as it could. So I'm keeping the value of the white, the foam patterns, the white water, the crashing waves a little bit darker and then once they're dry I'm going to add a couple of lighter layers and then I'm going to be saving my lightest values right until the very end of the painting and these will be applying sparingly and it's going to really make that water come to life. My brushes are also getting smaller now and I'm using a number two and number four evergreen short flat brush made by Rosemary & Co. I've been using Rosemary & Co brushes for years, I love them. If you want to get some Rosemary & Co brushes I've put a link in the description box below. So you can see now I'm adding more detail to this breaking wave and I'm just building up the form and definition of it, especially the oxygenated water as it barrels over. Now one thing I forgot to paint was the little rock here where the wave is crashing over it that's creating that huge foam burst. So I suddenly realised after I was into this painting but very easy to paint this in especially with gouache because it was dry in about five minutes. And then I carried on working on these other rocks as well painting the rock faces that are in the full sunlight. For this I actually worked off the existing cloud mix that I used and then I just added in more burnt sienna, some more titanium white and also a little bit of yellow ochre. So I'm creating a kind of creamy colour here that's quite low in chroma or saturation. I'm also still using these flat brushes to paint the surfaces of the rocks. Next I started working on the water in the foreground, some of these spills that are over the rocks but also this calmer water that's channeling between the rocks. It's also reflecting the rocks as well so it's darker in value, also it's in shadow as well. This again is a mix of ultramarine blue, a dash of burnt sienna, a small amount of titanium white and a little bit of crimson. Still maintaining that colour harmony throughout the painting as I've been using this colour combination throughout. So I'm now starting to really get into some finer detail here. The next thing after that is to paint some of these tendrils of foam patterns that are in the barreling wave and actually this is a really good effect that you can use to create convincing looking barreling waves because it helps to communicate the wave actually folding over as it crashes but also adds drama to it as well. I'm also painting some foam patterns here in the foreground and the brush I'm using is a number two Shiraz Rigger brush which is perfect for painting foam patterns as those long bristles allow for some really interesting marks. One of the things I wanted to do here where the wave's crashing is to just smooth out the transition zone between the area of the wave that's in light and the shadow areas of the white water and I'm using a round brush here to do that. I'm also painting in some more of these shadows and just shaping this foam burst here. As I painted the shadows in the foam burst I used much less water in the paint mix and used the bristles to just drag it along the watercolour paper and just create the illusion of water droplets also as a means to soften the edges 
of the foam burst and the transition areas between the areas in full sunlight and the areas in shadow. And then I was able to just go back and work across the wave here, adding some darker values of colour here and there, and just building out the form of the waves and the white water. Then working on the white water in the foreground as well. Now, if you're enjoying this video so far and you're new to my channel, then be sure to smash that subscribe button and also hit the bell notification to be notified of when I upload a new video. I'm really loving painting with gouache. I'm going to be making more videos on painting with gouache in the future, as well as my other videos on painting with oils. So I was well into the painting at this point and I was totally in the zone adding more detail and here I'm going back to working on the foam burst and I'm now adding some lighter layers to the highlight areas. But I'm still keeping the value of the white a little bit darker by adding in some ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and a dash of crimson. As I said I'm going to be saving my lightest values until the end, that's also where I'll be adding my final details and that will bring the whole painting together and it will make those waves pop as well. So getting into much finer detail now. And here I'm using an Evergreen Egbert brush, which again is a really nice brush to use. You can get some awesome effects with it, especially in painting these foam patterns that are in the foreground. Also painting some of these highlights on the rocks here where the water has splashed over them and they're glistening and reflecting in the sun. So this is helping to communicate a wet rock surface. So far in this painting I've spent the majority of my time working on the waves and the white water and I've been saving the rocks until a bit later on but now it's time to come back to them and I'm restating these dark values by adding another layer mainly using ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and a dash of crimson. Now this is where I'm saving my darkest darks and I actually want to bring those rocks forward a little bit in the painting by doing this as well as painting some of these dark accents in the rocks especially the cracks and the fissures that are within them. So here I can add some more detail and just a bit more shape into the rocks making them look more dramatic, weathered and rugged. The painting is getting near to completion and I'm now adding some of these final highlights to the breaking wave and the foam burst and I'm using my Shiraz Rigger brush with a mix of just titanium white straight from the tube and a dash of yellow ochre and I'm just sparingly adding a few highlights. Now if you want to learn more about painting or you want to improve your painting skills or maybe even if you're a complete beginner you should definitely join my Patreon channel. I've got loads of full length painting tutorial videos that go in depth. Also reference photos and lesson notes that you can use and other cool stuff all for just $5 a month and I've put the link in the description box below. I also have in-depth painting tutorial videos available from my website at samuelerp.com and again I've put the link in the description box below. So back to the painting and I'm really getting into these last details and I'm now painting these final highlights on the foam and white water that's in the foreground and again using the same mix that I've used for the foam burst and the breaking waves. So just a mix of titanium white with a dash of yellow ochre. Now this is one of the other cool things I've noticed that you can do with gouache. You can evaluate your painting as it comes towards the end like in this situation and I could see that perhaps I could really bring out some of these waves a bit more and make them look a bit more prominent in the painting. So what I did here was I added some darker values to this smaller wave that's in the midground, but also added some darker values to the main wave in the painting and that's just really bringing out the overall form of the wave. This is a cool thing about gouache just because it dries so quickly that you can make these changes and just add more detail. But I was really liking how this painting was coming together and at this point I was getting near to completion. It was here that I was just adding these last little details, for example the spills here over the rocks using my Shiraz Rigger brush and just other things like some more foam patterns within a couple of these breaking waves. Then there's a few little details to be added to the rocks. But it was at this point in the painting that I decided it was complete and then the last part which I really enjoy and that's peeling off the masking tape to see what it truly looks like. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and that it inspires you to paint seascapes. Thanks for watching, hope you're having a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next video.